welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating some textured illustrator brushes, which are really fun to use and can really up the level of kind of your handmade feel in your layouts. And if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you know that I'm kind of crazy when it comes to topography. So I want to show you how to recreate exactly what you see on screen. Right here is the exact outcome that we're going to create together in this tutorial. And let me show you really quick how awesome these textures can be. You can layer them on top of each other, which is really fun, especially for some of the smaller textures. And then you can also, let me zoom in here. You can see we've got some really beautiful varied texture going on with all the different strokes that we create. So this is the outcome and I'm going to walk you through every single step. So we're going to create a new document. I'm going to grab these colors and I'll give them to you in just a second. I wanted to use some really bright ones for this one. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to create a new document. I'm working in RGB just so you can see them nice and bright on screen, but I'll also give you the CMYK builds if you'd like to print this out later. So let me first get rid of, um, this is my brushes palette and you can get to it by going window brushes and it'll pop open. So I'm just gonna clear this out so you can see exactly what we're doing so you don't get confused by any of the default brushes right here. So I'm just gonna toggle this little icon down, choose select all on use, and then I'm just gonna hit the trash can and that will take care of those. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here with the color. I'm gonna paste in my color swatches and I'll just zoom up. Um, so this is the RGB color build for this darker blue Blue. Here's this lighter teal color and here is my lime green. So I will switch this over to CMYK so you can get the builds for those. So I would just round up or round down um, since it's not a perfect transition from RGB to CMYK. So here's the lime green, here's the light teal, and here's this darker blue. Okay, I'm going to switch these back over to RGB so we're all on the same page. All right, so couple of things before we get started. Whenever you're creating a texture brush, it helps if it's extremely vertical. Um, you'll get some better outcomes from that. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using some freebies found over on my blog, every-tuesday.com. And I'm going to just grab, I've got this set of um, handmade brush textures. So these are just drawn out and they're vectorized. So I'm just going to grab this one right here to use for our example. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm also going to grab some, I've got these mini grit textures that are totally free. So you can head on over to every tuesday.com and pick them up. And I'm just going to copy this and come back to our document and paste it in. Okay. So as you can see, we're in really good shape with this one, but this one, not so much because we want it to be extreme vertical so we can use it and kind of wrap it around different lengths of our brush as we're drawing. So in order to make this more vertical, I'm just going to hit A on my keyboard for my direct select tool and I'm just going to draw a line, just a horizontal uh, rectangular box, just rubber band select, and then I'm just going to hit delete twice. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here just to make this really narrow, just to grab a selection of this grittiness. So I'm going to hit delete twice. That's important. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna scale it down just slightly. So we've got about the same length as our other brush texture right here. So I'm gonna group these together. So Command G or Control G on a PC. So I've got all my little grip pieces together and I've got my brush texture right here as well. So a few things in order for this to work correctly, we need to make sure that these are compound paths. So when they overlap each other, we don't get any weirdness or white areas showing up. It'll just make for a much more consistent textured brush. So I'm just going to take this brush. I'm going to hit command eight or control eight on a PC. You can also go object, compound path make and you can make a compound path that way as well it's basically telling illustrator consider this one item even though there's like a little straggly pieces um, mixed in here as well but that just tells illustrator whenever it's being used consider it as one item so the second thing we need to do with each of these is unite them so illustrator is convinced it is one piece no matter what once it's within a brush, a texture brush. So we're just gonna hit this little Unite icon down here in your Pathfinder palette. If you don't have your Pathfinder palette open, you can get to it by going Window Pathfinder and it'll pop right open. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing for the grit texture, just to reinforce all the steps we just did. So first we're gonna make a compound path, so Command-8 or Control-8. 
And then we're just going to hit this little Unite icon in our Pathfinder palette, and now we're all set. Now we can begin actually making our texture brushes. So we're going to start with this one because I want to walk you through a few more options that you're able to get, and then uh, we'll finish up and just reinforce those same options with the grit texture, and then we'll put them all on our text like this, and then we'll be done. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just select our texture, and then we're going to come over here to our brushes panel, which once again you can get to by going window brushes and you're just going to hit this little icon right here for a new brush and I'm going to choose art brush and hit OK. So up here we can name our brush so I'm just going to call this ink brush and then we've got a few options. So scale proportionally if you select this it just means that as the length of your line that you draw is longer it will get larger. This one uh, I typically use the most often and I'm going to show you this one in just a minute but we need to create our brush before I can show you how this one works. So up here you can choose um, how your brush reacts depending on if you have a Wacom tablet maybe. Um, you can set pressure settings here. You can set the width, um, the default size. So if I feel like my texture brush is a little on the large size, um, I can slide this down and we can actually see what it'll look like around 50% here. Okay, so I've got the direction going down right here. This really um, is more significant with pattern brushes than with a texture brush because with texture brushes you have varied texture that's kind of all over the place so it doesn't matter quite as much the direction. I typically choose the up direction for these rather than the down direction but either one is totally fine. For colorization we're going to switch this to tints and you can see if you click this little um, light bulb right here you can get some more information about uh, right now we just have tints selected you can see we can define tints and shades or a hue shift but we're just going to stick with uh, simple tints which basically means whatever stroke color you have is the color of your texture so pretty easy to remember and then down here you just want to make sure this overlap is selected so you don't get any funkiness when things overlap uh, if this were selected so just make sure this one's selected and hit okay all right so now we're just going to hit b on our keyboard for our brush tool and we can just draw out a brush and you can see our texture is taking on the quality of that stroke so over here, if you want to enlarge and just see what it looks like, if it's a little larger, you can actually come into your stroke palette and increase the weight. So if you want a larger one overall, you can increase it right there. So I'm going to come back down to one. So now I'm going to show you how that other option in here works. So I'm going to double click on my brush and that all you have to do is double click there if you ever want to go back and change your settings later on. So I want to show you how this works, which is pretty cool. If you click on the stretch between guides you can actually move these guidelines and if I move them you can see now that this extends further like my little scratchy area extends further than it did before so if I up it you can see it goes back so it's solid until it gets to the more textured area right here so if I bring it down it just means the further down this is this section will last longer throughout your brush so pretty cool I'm actually gonna keep it up right around half right there because I really like that kind of scratchy scratchiness to my texture. So I'm going to keep that and hit OK. And then we can say yes, apply to the strokes that we already have. And now we're all set. So that's one brush down. And now we're just going to reinforce the same things with our grit texture brush. So I'm just going to hit this little icon down here and choose. This is actually a new brush. I don't know why it said delete. See, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna hit art brush, hit okay. And then with our settings, I'm gonna call this one grit. And I'm just gonna keep this one at stretch to fit stroke length because we don't want any of these getting super stretched out since it's got that natural grittiness to it. So I'm just gonna come over here, choose my direction as being up and changing my colorization to tints. Make sure my little overlap icon is selected and hit okay. All right, so now that we have our brushes all set, we can test that gritty one if we want, which is looking really awesome, and I love it. Okay, anyway, we're gonna get right into our typography. So we're gonna use our layers here so we can kind of create guides and layer things without having to mistakenly select things that we don't want to select. It'll just keep us much more organized. So I'm gonna create a new layer and call this one the main text. And then I'm going to create another layer and call this one texture. And I'm going to create another one and call this one um, 
guides. All right. So what we want is our main text to be on the top. So I'm just going to drag it up. And we want our texture to be in between our main text and our guide. So just make sure you drag it until you see that dark line and then you can release. If by chance you end up tacking it into one of your other layers, you can see it fell into guides by accident. Just toggle this down, select it, and then drag up until you see that solid line and you'll be good to go. So the order of our layers, main text, texture, and guides. And this is kind of just our color. All right, so for our main text, we're just gonna type out, I'm gonna type out the word Tuesday. And I am using a font called Skitch Solid for this. And I'm actually gonna make it all caps because I like all caps. All right, and we're gonna do two of these. So I'm gonna duplicate that. And uh, in order to duplicate this, I know you see my little keyboard um, strokes on screen, but this is the Alt key when you see that. So I'm gonna hold Alt, Shift, click, and drag. And that gives me my duplicate. All right, so for the first one, let's see what colors we were using before green and dark blue. So we're going to color this green and then we're going to color this one dark blue. And now we are all set with our main text. And now we need a guide to kind of judge where we're going to draw our texture. Um, so it'll make it much easier. So this is kind of my method that I use. If you want to freehand it, by all means, go ahead. Um, I just like having a guide. So I'm going to hold Alt with both of these selected and kind of off center these. And I'm going to make both of these, um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to make them like gray. Let me do like gray. All right, so these are our guides, so we need to drag these. If we come back into our layers, you can grab this little square and you can drag it down and that'll move those selected pieces into that layer. So now I've got my guides on and I can lock my layers so then I don't accidentally touch them and I'm actually gonna lock my main text layer as well. So now I can come into my texture and just start drawing with my texture brush. So we're going to start with this brush first. And in order to make sure the color of your brush is correct, make sure that it's the stroke. So I'm going to um, switch these. And this is my stroke color. So I'm going to change this to be this dark blue color. And then I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. I'm going to come over here to my brushes palette and select my ink brush. And then I can just come in here. I'll zoom in and I can just draw one up and that's feeling kind of large so we can reduce it by coming over to our stroke palette and let's make this one like 0.25 and see what that looks like. So now if I hit B on my keyboard and I draw it, that seems a little too small. So let's up this to 0.5 and see what that looks like. All right, that one's looking pretty good. So from here on out, I'm just gonna draw with my brush and you can see I can do longer strokes like right here and you can see it gets a little stretchier um, the texture does and come down and draw around and I'll speed up the video and finish this off using this method so now that we have that drawn on we can kind of preview what it looks like if we come into our layers palette and now all we have to do is turn off our guides and you can see it's looking pretty cool and it looks just like our original outcome so that's a really fun texture the ink one and now we're going to do the same thing only we're going to use the grit texture this time and i'm going to change my color back to this dark blue again and it's going to seem more like just depth instead of multicolored on this one. So once again, I'm going to turn on my guides layer. I'm going to make sure my texture layer is selected. I'm going to hit B on my keyboard and let's see what that looks like. That is still our ink brush. So we need to come over to our brushes, select our grip brush. Let's see, that is definitely too big. So I'm going to come into my strokes and change this to 0.25. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that one's looking really good. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna go right through this word just like I did the previous one and then I'll be right back.
Okay, so we have our texture all laid out. So once again, we can preview it by turning off our guides and that's looking really nice. So if I zoom out, we can see both of our textures together. So that is how easy and quick it is to create your own vector texture brush in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies, including the free mini grit texture and the free vector brush textures, which I will leave links to in the video description. So be sure to click on those and you can pick them up for free and test out these new techniques um, right away. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.